everyone. It's really exciting to be here with all of you today. I'm going to be telling you about TensorFlow, and this is the work of a lot of people at Google Brain who's worked on it, and what are the latest advancements coming in TensorFlow. So we are living in an unprecedented time at this time with machine learning. The, a lot of things have changed, and how we interact with computers is fundamentally changing because of machine learning. And this is fueled by three main, re this is fueled by three main reasons. First of all, we have access to lots and lots of compute. And here you see one of uh, developed in-house by Google, a uh, TPU part, which is used for machine learning computation. And there are hardware accelerators like this being created all the time in this field. Second, there have been huge breakthroughs and advancements in algorithms. There are new algorithms like BERT being created almost on a monthly basis, which changes the way how natural processing, natural language processing is done, and lets anyone in the world train their own state-of-the-art question-answering system. The third thing is there's lots and lots of data. We're seeing huge waves of data sets being created from all kinds of discipline, like the new Open Images data set, which is crowdsourced from, from people. And TensorFlow is at the forefront of all of this machine learning revolution. It's allowing for developers, ML practitioners, and researchers around the world to benefit and create intelligent applications. The power and impact of TensorFlow would not be what it is without all of you, the TensorFlow developer community. It is with your help and interest, TensorFlow has grown to become one of the most widely adopted machine learning frameworks in the world. This is the map of GitHub stars of TensorFlow users who have self-identified their location. And you can see that there are people from all over the world here. This growth has been amazing. Since we launched TensorFlow in 2015, it has been downloaded 41 million times and has over 1,800 contributors from users all over the world. While TensorFlow has grown a lot and enabled a lot of creativity, it has also been very hard to use and sometimes even painful. You can do everything in TensorFlow in multiple ways, and sometimes you don't know what is the right way or for your particular application. The concept of sessions doesn't naturally fit into regular Python programming. And this, over a period of time, these APIs have become more and more confusing. And so we created and something called TensorFlow 2.0, which is the start of a new era for TensorFlow. And we are committed and focused to making it the best machine learning platform in the world. To make it easy, we focused on Keras as a single set of APIs. And we combined it with eager execution to make it uh, simple, like Python programming. We wanted to give you the flexibility to try the craziest of your ideas while scaling even to over an exaflop. And of course, give you the same robustness that you can take a machine learning model from research to production. And this has been battle tested with Google's products. So let's start with looking at the overall architecture for TensorFlow 2.0. TensorFlow, this architecture probably is very similar to what you have seen before. But with 2.0, many of the components work seamlessly and really well together. You, you can program your model using Keras APIs. And if you want to distribute it on multiple machines, you could use distribution strategy to make sure that you can distribute your training on either CPUs, GPUs, or TPUs. Once your training is complete, all this is saved in a single saved model format, and you could deploy it either on your mobile phone or your browser or even on, on the cloud on your servers. And there are many language bindings like Java, C++, Swift that is supported with TensorFlow. To see how these powerful APIs fit together for an entire training, these would be the different steps. For, you have TF data for data ingestion and for transformation, and Keras and pre-made estimators to actually build your model. And you can train them with Eager and get the performance with graphs, and finally package all of them into a saved model. So let's take a look at the APIs. A couple of years ago, TensorFlow adopted Keras as the standard high-level API. 
It works with multiple machine learning frameworks and provides a shared language for defining layers, models, optimizers, and losses. We implemented a version of Keras inside core TensorFlow and called it tf.keras. In, in its simplest form, Keras is simple. We, it is built from ground up to be Pythonic and is instrumental in inviting new people into the field of machine learning. This code represents a model definition, the training, and the training loop, meaning that it's really easy for you, design, for you to design and modify your architecture without needing to write lots of boilerplate code. With TensorFlow 2.0, whatever model definition you had in Keras in 1.x works in 2.0. But in 1.x, it ran a session under the hood, and in 2.0, it runs on eager mode. And every, this will work seamlessly without changing anything. So with TensorFlow 2.0, we've tried to reduce complexity and redundancy. We have one set of optimizers that work in and out of eager mode. We have one set of metrics that encompasses TF, TensorFlow metrics as well as Keras metrics. Losses have been consolidated, and we have one set of layers, and you can have custom layers if you need the flexibility. We've improved a lot of debuggability with Eager, and not just in Eager, but also in graph mode. In this particular example, you see that there are mismatched inputs, and so you get an error. And the error messages are very clear and tells you where the error is. If you're used to Python programming, this is not a big deal. But if you're used to TensorFlow 1.0, you'll realize that this is a lot more convenient to know where the error comes from. One thing is, after you have built your model, you would want to scale it and not wait weeks for the training to complete. And how, do you, how can you scale your model without actually making changes to the model code? And how to keep it simple and ensure that the performance is available when you scale it. For this, you would use distributed training uh, that is supported with TensorFlow. So let's go into an example. This is, uh, we instantiate a Keras model. This, we've just used a Keras application set model here for convenience. And you can call, compile, and fit. And let's say you've experimented and the model code runs really well. But it just takes two or three weeks before the training is complete and you get your result, and you want to do it much faster. So how would you leverage using running this training on multiple GPUs all within the same machine? It is really simple. First thing is you create something called a mirrored strategy and include your model code within the scope of that strategy. With this, you will be able to train your model on multiple GPUs within a single machine. In terms of scaling efficiency, we saw that we can get up to 90 to 95% scaling when you use distributed distribution strategy with this, with this code. It replicates the variables and ops on all the GPUs and uses all reduce to aggregate the gradients. After you've uh, if you've trained it on one machine with multiple GPUs, now if you want to scale it to multiple machines, you use something called as a multi-worker mirrored strategy. Just as before, you define your multi-worker mirrored strategy, and you include your model definition within the scope. And with this, you will be able to train on multiple machines. This works for estimator-based APIs. And for Keras-based distribution training, this is work in progress, and we hope to bring it to you soon. So in order to make the real-world applications a reality, you must be able to take a model from research into pro uh, and prototyping into production all the way. And this has been the core strength and focus for TensorFlow. Using TensorFlow, you can deploy your models on any number of platforms. And we are committed with 2.0 that you can continue to do this and deploy it either on the server or maybe on the mobile phone or even in the browser with TensorFlow.js. And we have a suite of products for all of this. So to do machine learning in production, you need more than just the trainer. As you can see in this diagram, the trainer is just one component of your production system. What you do in research today is something that becomes production tomorrow. And TensorFlow has always been a product which takes you from research to production. And this is the strength of, and focus of TensorFlow. You start with a small data set in your laptop, but later on you want to scale it and distribute it uh, across different machines. 
So TensorFlow Extended is the product that deals with taking a machine learning into production from ingesting and transforming your data set all the way to deploying your machine learning models at scale. It provides you an end-to-end -end pipeline for training and deploying machine learning into production. TensorFlow Extended is something we developed in-house and that powers so many products inside Google. And we've open sourced the same. And it, it has been battle tested inside with Google products. So if you want to deploy your machine learning models on the mobile phone, TensorFlow Lite is the pro product to de deploy it on mobile devices. It uses a custom file format and strip down binaries so you can actually run your models on the device. So having a model run on the device will mean you can get low, smaller latencies because sometimes you don't have to go to the cloud and do a round trip. And for privacy reasons, the data can remain on the device and be useful for running machine learning device models. We launched TensorFlow Lite about 18 months back, and it is running on more than 2 billion devices worldwide today. You can also deploy machine learning models in the browser, and JavaScript is the number one programming language in the world. Last year, we launched TensorFlow.js as a library for training and deploying machine learning in the browser and with Node.js. Since then, we've seen a huge adoption in the JS community with more than 300 downloads, 300,000 downloads, and more than 100 plus contributors. But this is just the beginning, given how big the JS and the web ecosystem is. For uh, Spark users, you can use Spark and TensorFlow in a unified way with the Databricks platform. Databricks provides a runtime for machine learning that pre-packages TensorFlow and Spark in ready-to-use clusters, making it really easy for data engineers and data scientists to build pipelines and machine learning all in one place. So to recap everything, since 2015, TensorFlow has grown into an end-to-end -end ecosystem from research to production, from training in the data center to deploying it on the server to mobile to browsers with support for many, many languages. This fantastic growth has been fueled by our community, and we welcome much more. As our ecosystem grows, we wanted to do something more for our users. We are partnering with O'Reilly and hosting a week-long conference dedicated to celebrating the open source ecosystem, calling it the TensorFlow world. This event explores exciting contributions in TensorFlow from research to production. Our vision is to bring together the community together at TensorFlow world and give space for people to interact with each other. We hope to see you there. Thank you.